Hello and welcome to my video about police body cameras. My name is Noel Taylor and this video is for my intro to criminal justice class. I will be discussing some of the societal factors that contributed for the need for body worn cameras, otherwise known as BWCs, and there will be a few still images displaying real world events through body camera footage. With that, let us begin. I will start with the background of why body cameras came to be, how they were justified, and how they work. Then I will go into some of the intricacies of body cams, how they have changed over time, and some of the other uses you may not initially think about. I will show some of the problems they face today, and I will describe to you some of my own ideas about how to improve them. Finally, I will discuss their viability in today's society to better understand why some departments use them while others do not. These two images pretty much sum up how and why body cams came to be. In 2013, a small-scale experiment was conducted in Rialto, California. The experiment tracked data from two variables. Half of the officers of Rialto wore them, and the other half did not. The rate of the use of force was tracked across three years. The study found that there was around a 50% decrease in the usage of force and there was a around 90% decrease in complaints of use of force for officers who wore the cameras. This study, along with the 2014 shooting of Michael Brown, led many, many more departments to adopt body cameras to allow for more information in possible similar future court cases. No department wanted to be in headlines remotely like those in Ferguson. The state and witnesses had different stories of what transpired, uh, this caused riots and destruction not only in Ferguson, but all across the United States. Departments realized that they needed some kind of surveillance to have evidence if anything similar happened to them. These two factors were timed at the right spot to have a major public push for these cameras. Police body cameras are simply cameras mounted to the uniform of law enforcement officers, typically around their chest region, inside their jackets. I have included a schematic of a generic brand. The image is slightly blurry, I admit, but overall it is quite rudimental. The largest part of the device is the battery and data storage. Uh, the memory cannot save an entire work shift, so they operate by continuously recording, but deleting footage after 30 to 60 second intervals, depending on, mod on the model. They will only save the data when they are activated to do so. This allows them to be activated as a reaction when something has already happened. As long as that 30 to, second, 30 to 60 seconds have not passed, all relevant context would be included from the officer's perspective. In the case of police work, 30 seconds is simultaneously a long time and no time at all. Sometimes an incident can happen in five seconds. In this case, the entire situation would be saved if the officer remembers to press the button to save it. If there was a slow lead up to a situation that went more than 30 seconds before the officer activated the camera, some context may get lost. I did a ride along with the highway patrol and Trooper Sanders explained that when he opens the door to his vehicle and steps out, the footage begins to save and when he returns and enters the vehicle, it stops saving the recording. There's a button to manually activate it as well if he needs that and the car's dash cam works the same way. If he exits, the footage will um, if he exits, the footage will start to save, and when he returns, it will deactivate, or he can turn it on and off manually. Um, the dash cam just allows for another angle of footage to be saved if anything were to happen. Uh, there are several brands or companies that design and manufacture them, body cameras. They compete with one another to continuously improve their design and keep their customers. Over the course of nearly a decade at this point of being widespread, body cameras have improved quite a bit. Some of the modern uh, features include high definition video. The image on the left is from 2017 and the one on the right is from 2020. Uh, the lighting conditions are different between the two, so of course there's going to be a change in image quality, as we would expect, but technological improvements have come a long way. Audio recording has improved considerably, the quality of audio has improved. There are anti-tampering measures, one-touch activation, wide-angle lenses, and most of them display the time and location and even the badge number of the officer uh, when the recording is saved. Some even stream information to remote servers and a few 
even have a, a screen that you can watch footage in the moment if needed, uh, which is pretty cool. The most important developments have been battery life and mass. These body cams have gotten smaller and lighter while at the same time offering more and more information. Footage from body cameras are a great resource for training new officers. The footage is all from the real world, and a lot of it would be hard to believe if it was not recorded. Academies can use recordings to show the variety of things that can happen over, over the course of a shift, and can be used to show where the officer went right and where mistakes were made. There are times when the decision between lethal and non-lethal force is not clear, yet is important beyond a doubt. Body camera footage can be used to show situations that worked well and situations that did not go well. The officers, uh, the new officers can use what they learned to guide their decision-making process in the field. Nothing could prepare anyone for the split-second decisions they may be required to make, but something is better than the alternative. Tactical units often use footage to improve their strategy for both officer and suspect safety. Avoiding crossfire while surrounding a fleeing individual is very difficult, and body cam footage has been used to show good and bad practices. Storage and battery limitations necessitate that only small bits of a shift are monitored, but even then, large departments are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars yearly to properly save and uh, safely store the recordings and information for record keeping. Oakland reportedly has 600 cameras, generating a total of 7 terabytes of video per month. All video evidence must be stored for a minimum of 2 years. So, multiplying the terabytes by the months, uh, that is, at a minimum, around 170 terabytes of data constantly being shifted into and out of the system after expiration. The recordings contain sensitive information including names, addresses, and other identifying information. Every recording is considered evidence and must be protected from deletion, editing, and tampering, and thus must be secured, must be securely stored. Large departments set up private servers to store all of this, uh, which is the majority of the cost to operate these body-worn cameras. The cost of BWCs can be millions of dollars per year for large cities. A critique of body cams is that they are supposed to tell the whole story, uh, and some say that they only give an officer's perspective on a situation, and even then, they don't usually move around uh, and show as much detail as the heads and eyes of an officer. Um, so improving body cameras can be done in a few ways. Uh, a few of the biggest problems with body cameras are that if they are not activated, they will not save what was recorded. There are augmented reality glasses that have been out for a few years that can project an image over a screen or a lens. Um, there are also some body cameras that get mounted on glasses and can track eye movements for better accountability. If there was a way to combine these two aspects together, it could be helpful for not only remembering to record or to save the recording if there is a image you look at for, say, two seconds, and then it will begin saving until you look at that part of the, the screen or lens again for two seconds. If a company did this, they could um, even improve that by putting the name of the streets in the corner uh, as, an, uh, as, an easy, uh, as an easy reference or other relevant police information, possibly even implementing a connection to neighbors or other uh, information archives so that dispatch is not required to be called to relay information. Cameras with, or glasses with mounted cameras and eye tracking are becoming more and more common. There are actually gun cameras, but they are not common at all. Uh, this is due to a variety of factors, but added cost and the, rear sh the sheer rarity of shootings make them a hard buy-in for departments. However, shootings are when body cameras are needed most, and having a direct line uh, of perspective of what the officer was pointing at and seeing could be very helpful in some situations. Departments are willing to pay these large costs because it is offset by a significant reduction in civilian complaints. Uh, investigations are carried out faster of those complaints uh, since video evidence can clear officers of wrongdoing or prove them of doing wrong. Um, and just lower lawsuit payouts in general, along with 
a lot fewer lawsuits as well. The lower risk of media coverage can save millions to billions of dollars for the nation as a whole, as stories cannot be constructed to fit the narrative of the day. Uh, economies of scale and risk assessments are factors in determining which departments utilize BWCs or not. The larger the department, the more benefits body cameras have, and the smaller the, the department, the more downsides there are, not to mention the generally lower budgets they have. Overall, body-worn cameras have benefited the public over the last decade by reducing the use of force by a wide margin. Uh, there has been a reduction in racial discrimination correlated with the implementation of BWCs. And for those who want to be informed, it allows a peephole into a portion of law enforcement's daily life. A better understanding of law enforcement by the public explains why police take the action they do in situations and how to best interact with them. BWCs have benefited law enforcement by lowering total costs, increasing accountability, and enriching training for new officers and changes in procedure and specific situations they may be encountered. These are the sources I utilized for this project. I also wanted to give credit to the Ohio Highway Patrol and Trooper Sanders for taking the time to explain things in further detail than what the internet could provide. Thank you for watching until the end. Have a great day.